Liverpool take on Tottenham Hotspur at Anfield in the Premier League. Now, just a quick caveat. We are recording this ahead of Tottenham's game with Chelsea in midweek. So things could change, but we do want to try and look ahead to this fixture, uh, try and get ahead of this one a little bit. Abby, how are you feeling, first of all? Tottenham going to Anfield um, off the back of a derby defeat. It's not going great for Liverpool at the moment either. So does that give you encouragement maybe that Spurs can go there and upset the apple cup? Uh, yeah, Spurs heavy uh, at the minute this week. Lots of big games coming up. Um, yeah, I think if you're going to try and catch Liverpool, if there's ever a good time to catch Liverpool, it would be lately, you know, two wins out of the last seven. Spurs haven't won at Anfield since 2011. It's not a ground that, you know, we do particularly well at. There's been a few draws um, over the years, but and it's always actually a pretty good game. It's a really good one for the neutral. Two teams that really go at each other. Liverpool, I think, want revenge revenge for earlier this season when Spurs beat them. Uh, obviously the, the, the VAR incident um, that went on in that game and the Canate yeah. own goal at the final whistle basically. Um, so they, they want redemption for that. They've been talking about it all season so they've got that riding on it. Um, you know for Spurs coming off the back of you know the North London derby defeat as well as the uh, the battering by, by Newcastle a couple of weeks earlier. We've conceded seven goals in, in two games um, and obviously in terms of goals scored other than the pen it's just been one so Spurs need to really try and find some form up front which they haven't been particularly good at also they need to stop shipping goals if that is possible you know they need to do something to shore up the back and try and just not let every single corner or cross that comes in end up in the back of the net um but it's a tough ask going to Anfield regardless of the form Liverpool in it's always a it's always a big uh, and difficult challenge and I think that you know this is the second last game that Klopp's got at Anfield the the energy is going to be high they know what's on the line as well they they can I guess kind of put them back into a conversation Liverpool if they win this game in terms of the league maybe so th there's a lot on it you mentioned uh, Spurs need to find some form up front just quickly is there a, a case that maybe Hyunmin Son should be taken out of the starting eleven because he hasn't quite looked at it in recent weeks. Yeah, I, I don't think this is a take that's going to go down particularly nicely. And I, I love Son. You know, he's been a brilliant servant to the club. He's obviously the captain now as well. But I've just found him to be quite weak. I, I, I saw him ducking out of a lot of challenges in that in that North London derby, not setting the tone as I'd like him to. Um, we've kind of toyed around with him on the left and through the middle this season. Historically, he's been actually quite good down the middle when he used to fill in for Harry Kane if there was an injury. Um, and he, he did start the season off well there when Madison was kind of in behind and feeding, but James Madison's also not been performing very well at all. So I'm looking at both of them, and maybe more so Madison, I would actually say to drop than Son, because you need someone in that, in terms of finishing, if they're in the position, Son is still one of the best finishers um, when he's got that opportunity but creatively we're not really creating anything at all so Son if he was left out not that I think that's going to happen I don't I think Andrew will definitely play him I, I wouldn't be surprised about but James Madison for me I don't think he's done anything to warrant warrant being in the starting 11 of recent weeks which, which actually upsets me deeply because he was having such a brilliant start to the season and I know he has that ability to cut you know to change games I just haven't seen him step up for a long time maybe there's an argument Tottenham need to shake it up for Liverpool it's Jurgen Klopp's penultimate game at Anfield what's the mood going to be like Sam because they thought they were going to be pushing for a Premier League title mm. do they go into kind of like party slash farewell mode now for Jurgen Klopp or is it focus on the future now and, and try and show what you can to impress Arna Slot, who we think is coming in pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, there's two sides to that. The fans can behave in one way and then the, the players can take another approach. The fans should probably, if they can, that's not, not for me to tell them how to feel, but obviously dropping out of a title race is tough. It's really hard to take psychologically. Um, but you've got literally three games left of Jurgen Klopp, two of which are at home. You can serenade him, you can thank him for nine incredible years, a ton of trophies, some unbelievable 95, 98 point seasons. Like It's just been tremendous. And if I were a Liverpool fan at Anfield on that day, I would, I would want to basically serenade him and mm. thank him. If you're Klopp, you're now in this funny position where you probably thought that something would be on the line here in terms of a, in terms of a trophy, but you might actually just be trying to set Liverpool up into the summer and going into next season. And there's a few things that I think I'd be looking for here. First is, let's get the Salah nonsense out of the way. Like after the little tiff at West Ham, whatever's happened has happened. If Salah is going to be sticking around at Liverpool, which reports this week suggest may happen, need to see him in that starting 11. Mm. Ideally, need to see him scoring. 
and just letting everyone know that all is well. That's really, really important here. And it would be really weird if Klopp kind of signs off this season and he and Salah have got a frosty relationship because they have gone hand in hand for success over the course of his nine years or change with uh, Anfield. And then there's some other, a few other players as well. Andy Robertson, I don't think, has had a particularly good season. I'm not sure too many Liverpool fans would disagree with me there. Andy Robertson, Trent Alexander-Arnold, show everyone that you are the fullbacks for the future, for the near future. Show everyone that you've still got it because Trent has kind of been playing midfield, right back, not sure what you're doing. He's been injured. He was not good at Goodison Park. None of them were. But Trent, one of the players in particular, I was really disappointed with. And then you've got the opportunity to maybe usher in someone like Harvey Elliott and show everyone that he's actually going to become the future in midfield. So it's weird to say because I thought Liverpool would be in the title race. Mathematically, they still technically are. But this is a future-proofing job, and it's not how it was supposed to end. Abby, uh, Sam mentioned the Mo Salah situation. What would you do now if you're Jurgen Klopp? Would you try and discipline him after what happened at the weekend? Or do you think, I'm not going to be here mm. after mm. the next few weeks. What is the point in me potentially creating a story that could overshadow my departure after a really successful period at the club? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be doing any of that if I was Jurgen Klopp I'm sure they had words after you know obviously Salah's comments kind of as he walked through the press and the, the mix zone after the game as well I'm sure they would have had their own discussion on that but you know it, it's kind of like a, a teacher at school when you know they're leaving you know maybe you want to play up a little bit but I um I don't think <laughs> no, that no, it's, no. <laughs> I don't think it's really worth it being you know a headline going into this game it will be but I think Klopp needs to kind of shut that down there's no point of him sticking Salah on the bench or you know not putting him in the squad because of that you know then the fans will turn and look at you know, Jürgen and be like, well, you're leaving, what are you doing? Like, you're just kind of sabotaging us, which is not how they look at him or want to look at him. So I I don't think that he's he's going to be out of the squad. I think he will be in the squad and um, I think he'll be looking to prove a point. For Tottenham Hotspur and yeah. Ange Postacoglu, there have been some questions asked about Tottenham in the last few months and, and, you know, more of that's come to the fore after the North London derby with regards to their tactical approach and things like that. Is this an opportunity, this tough run of fixtures that they have? I know they're still in the hunt for Champions League football, but is it an opportunity for Postacoglu to show something more and maybe get the fans a little bit more bought in ahead of a big summer for Spurs and then, of course, next season? I think that the fans are still in. I do. I definitely feel like there hasn't been that much change. I think that it's fair that fans are questioning maybe just this reliance on having the high line and not having well, you, a, a you plan can say, B. You can say that he's done a good job overall, absolutely. but still ask questions yeah. at the same time. Uh, yeah, right? absolutely. I think that you can look at the season as two halves. I think the first half of the season when Spurs are playing well, probably up until maybe the Chelsea game, or even up until Christmas, I still think we played well, even with the injuries. We saw Royale and Davis going to centre-back, you know, when there was no Romero and no Van der Ven. And this is a young Spurs side. So you lose Harry Kane before the season starts and, you know, you've already lost 30 goals. So for Spurs to kind of be in and around the top four conversation, he's done a really good job there but I think the parallel side of it is that you're looking at how many goals Spurs are Spurs are conceding and that is a problem because we can't be that team that we used to be you know early noughties end of the 90s where you're sc scoring four conceding three because at the minute we're not scoring four we're not even scoring one and I think that my biggest problem with Spurs yes you know I'm looking at Ange but also the lack of maybe aerial threat and what I would say for him to do in this game I would start Richarlison I absolutely would give Spurs something to former Everton man too. yeah and again look we go back to last season when he thought he got the winner and then we you know all went and looked up at the other end and Jota was there so there's been moments you know at Anfield where Spurs could have done something or got back you know got back into the game but I, I think that this is this is where you need to start Richard and you have to have a physical presence in that box you need to we, we keep floating balls in but there's no one there to receive it so against the defense at the minute with Van Dyke, who is still one of the best but they're leaking you want someone in there that can f have a presence and maybe bully um you know Joe Gomez or Canate or, or Van Dyke, whoever they've got there so I'm looking at that and I need to see Ange give if he's not going to compromise on the high line I need to see a little bit of tactical nows in and around the pitch mm, yeah the problem is well, off the back of what everything Ange has put down in his career it is actually pretty difficult to see that compromise coming of course <laughs> based on what we saw at Celtic which was genuinely just a if you score two we'll score three we'll win four three whatever it is now obviously they, they put a few teams to bed because of the quality but like it's always been this way you might be looking for it but you might still be looking for it following the weekend because realistically are we actually going to see that no I, I think that he's not going to compromise on anything and I think that it will be it will be the same but I, I'm looking at next season and saying if we're still sitting here in October and 
yeah, we hopefully will have added some quality and maybe we get a new six in midfield, which I do think that we need. I, I, the the centre-back isn't going to change because we've got a good partnership there. But And same at full-back. The, the results and the, the conceding of goals isn't showing that. So I need to see what he's doing on the training ground another pre-season. Um, and then we go from there. He always said he was never going to compromise on what he wanted to do but in he terms has of to, his style. Abby, like, I think this is the most difficult league. Well, then league. It might, he might live and die by the sword. Yeah, exactly. I think this is the most difficult league in the world because you have to learn and you have to learn fast. You have to adapt. And I would go as far as saying that if Ange Postacoglu doesn't adapt to some degree, I'm not saying rip it all up and start again, but he needs to make those slight tweaks and adjustments. And if he doesn't, I don't think he'll last the whole of next yeah. season. I, I agree. Because I think at the start of this season, it was the vibes. Like, I know that sounds a ridiculous thing to no, say, it's true. but it was carrying Tottenham through. Sure. And now that that's died down a little bit, I think Tottenham look really soft-centred and weak. Yes. And that is well, not I, where they want to be. I think Tottenham have been found out. I think at the start of the season, you know, they probably didn't expect, teams didn't expect to, and to be like, oh, wow, you really are playing that style of football. Wow, you're really not compromising on it. And we loved it. Rock and roll football, you know, it's, it's good to see. You love it. But I think when... You know, he survived kind of, you know, with the injuries and got through that. But now, second half of the season, teams have worked you out. You know, they know where to where to get you. Like I've said a million times, you know, today, set pieces are where to really attack us. And we're not doing anything to improve on that. So if we're still sitting here in October, November, and we're still having the same conversation, then there will need to, there will be, there will need to be, yeah, there will does, need to be a conversation. It does not matter what your reputation is. If you do not adapt in the Premier League, it will yeah. chew you up and spit you out. And I point to Marcelo Bielsa, a god yeah. at Leeds and one of the greatest managers to ever live. He refused to compromise on his man-marking principles. Say the phrase man-marking in Leeds City Centre and everyone will go, Whoa, yeah. and shudder because they saw it over and over and over again. He did not compromise. He got the sack. No one is safe. You have to adapt. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a results-based game. Just very, very quickly, quick-fire predictions for this one. And just the caveat that we are predicting this result ahead of Tottenham's game against Chelsea. So things could change. But, Abby, quick prediction on this one. Not to, not to be on the fence again, because in the other video you're of the Chelsea game. Anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I, I, I think both of us come into this, again, not in, not in a good vein of form. Who knows? Maybe we will beat Chelsea. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Tottenham this. I'm going to give them something from this awful week that we've <laughs> been having. I'm going to go 2-1 Spurs. Sam? <sighs> That's bold. See, after that all really of that, well, we're rubbish, we can't do this. Um, amazing. Love it. The fan <laughs> comes out in the yeah. end, right? 3-1 uh, to Liverpool. 3-1 to Liverpool. I'm going to go for 3-0 to Liverpool. And I think some serious questions could be asked of yeah. Andrew's approach after that one as well. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Get your predictions in. How do you think this game is going to go?